World War II women, 400,000 women who served this nation, who stepped up when the nation needed them, they wanted some place for their story to be told. Indeed, there's nothing, none of the memorials here, like in Washington, even suggests that women served at that time. They put together a, a board, and our founding president, General Wilma Vaught, allegedly she didn't make a meeting one day, and she got a call that night. She said, well, um, well, I, I forgot all about it. What did you do? And they said, well, we elected officers, and you're the new president. And so she was ended up being the president for some 30 years. I would say that this memorial is here um, because of General Wilma Vaught. She raised the fund, she beat the bushes, she put together a team to have a design competition, she put together a history team, she traveled the nation spreading the word, asking for support, getting women enthusiastic about this place that was finally going to tell their story. So it was a labor of love uh, and, a, and a personal labor of love, I think, for so many of us who've served in the military so that there's a place that tells our story, that talks about our contributions to the nation. The hardest part of all of this was getting the money, certainly not raising enthusiasm. In the end, we had some 40,000 people who attended the dedication of the Military Women's Memorial. We lined, well, we lined, we filled the street with this audience from the front of the memorial almost all the way down to the circle to see the, the enthusiasm, the gratitude that there was this place that finally was saying thank you for your service. We'd ask them to, uh, if you can, wear your uniform, and some of them were able to wear their hat, and they did. Uh, they were so proud to be able to show their colors. The collection was formally established in July of 1994. And then we had to figure out, well, okay, we have a collection, we need items. <laughs> so what we did is in our newsletter and in other military magazines and things like that, we put out a call for artifacts. But the amazing thing was that even without any kind of advertisement, people would call and say, I have, I have my stuff. Do you want my stuff? So it was really that grassroots effort um, by these women and their family members. They were so excited when they found out about the memorial. You know, they were just offering things up left and right. <laughs> when we found out exactly how many exhibits that we'd have to do, when we figured it out and that we wanted to do something in each of the exhibit niches for dedication. But it was, it was nerve wracking. <laughs> I remember the night before dedication, um, before the ceremony, you know, some things still, the case is not being closed and mannequins still being out on the floor and needing to be dressed. And it was just, are, are we gonna get this done? But everything came together and it was just, you know, I sit back and I think now as I work on like one exhibit at a time that, you know, in a couple months we did what, 14, 16 exhibits that all opened up at the same time. And I just, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, how, how did we ever get that done? And um, it was exciting, exhilarating, nerve wracking, um, and rewarding when these women walked through and they saw their, they saw their stuff and they saw it in an exhibit. All the time, all the effort, it made it worth it. At the Military Women's Memorial, we have three exciting collections that tell the stories of America's service women. We have a research library with over 2,000 items. We have a collection that includes memorabilia, uniforms, artifacts, documents, and photos. And we also have an extensive oral history collection of more than 1,400 oral histories dating from World War I to the present. In the coming months, through the Women's Memorial website, individuals who are interested in conducting research with our collections will be able to access all of these resources through online portals. For our research library, we've recently cataloged the majority of our items 
in a fully searchable library catalog that will look familiar to the kind of catalog you would use at your public library. For the collection, we have migrated all of our collections records that have been cataloged since the early 90s to a new system that will be fully interactive to our public. Over time, we'll be able to add digital images to the descriptive information about our collection, making it even easier to have resources from our collection at your fingertips. With the Oral History Collection, we have an exciting project underway to not only digitize our oral histories, but to preserve them through a forward-thinking digital preservation platform that can also be accessed online through our website. This platform has also made it possible for us to bring our oral histories directly to our audiences in locations other than the memorial. Over the past year, we've been traveling an exhibit across locations in the Commonwealth of Virginia and across the United States with embedded QR codes that allow visitors to our exhibit to hear the firsthand accounts of our service women. Even prior to the dedication of the Military Women's Memorial, Service women stepped up to make their personal stories a part of our register, a comprehensive database of America's service women dating from the American Revolution to the present. We have nearly 300,000 personal accounts of women's service included in our register with the goal of reaching every single woman who has served in and with the U.S. Armed Forces to the present day. Up until this point, the Military Women's Memorial Register was only accessible to visitors to the memorial. Now, for anyone who chooses to register their service online or to register with us as a friend and supporter of the memorial, will have the ability to search our database of service women. Visit the memorial website to create your account and learn more about how you can search our database online. The Military Women's Memorial completed recently our phase one renovation, which took us six months of being closed. But during that time, we did some fantastic work to update and bring into the 21st century, the Military Women's Memorial. One of those key attributes, the Military Women's Memorial opened the Brigadier General Wilma L. Vaught Center. Now the Vaught Center is named in honor of our President Emeritus and the founder of the memorial. She's 92 years old, and she was recently awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest award any civilian is ever given. The Military Women's Memorial is undergoing phase two fundraising in order to close our doors again and build the gallery exhibit spaces. Now in 1997, when we opened, the gallery told the story of women from the Revolutionary War all the way to 1997. Now in the last 25 years, incredible strides have been made by military women. The rights and privileges that we now have to serve in every branch of the military and every career field wasn't even thought about 25 years ago. So the technology has changed and as we do the renovation, we'll be layering in new storytelling, new interactives, RFID chips, so much more to bring it not only current, but be prepared to tell the stories of the future.